Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt Napoli here, and welcome to episode 125 of Snack Minute. Uh, we have Patrick Gargano back with us. He's going to talk to us uh, a little bit more about the ANCC certification and the course content that will help you gain that certification. So, Patrick, welcome back. Thanks, guys. Um, I felt I needed like an intro song, some sort of, uh, I don't know, some sort of music to, to, to get things going. Um, so this is what I found. Yes, it's back. <laughs> so there we go so i am in fact back again to talk about encc i feel like we're we're all talking about encc um and so i thought i would start by just kind of showing folks what's been going on relating to encc so in terms of blog posts uh hank uh, recently posted fantastic blog post on all of the multi-cloud certs and what was nice with this is it kind of tied into really nicely the webinar that we did a few weeks ago kind of hit on you know why you would want to do these you know what the exams look like from a blueprint perspective and then I talked about the course content itself that we're we're working on as well so that was that was really exciting um, and then I think this week uh, two of our EVPs uh, met with Fortune magazine so uh, G2 and Fran and they were talking a lot about um, cybersecurity but also what's going on with Cisco U and the multi-cloud certs and, and, and content that are going to be on Cisco U. So that was, that was really, really exciting. Um, and then Par herself, our, our VP at Learning and Certifications, published a blog post where, again, she talked about cybersecurity. And I, I know, Matt, it's a spooky time of year. Um, and so <laughs> it's all about cybersecurity. But not only is it about cybersecurity, it's also about um, the new multi-cloud certs. Again, but what I liked about Par's um, blog post specifically was she tied it in uh, between the cybersecurity stuff and the multi-cloud cert relating to security. So we've got one specific one that really ties into security itself. The acronym is SCATS. And I mean, we talked about this a month ago when I you know, went through them all. Um, and and we, can, we can have another call when, when that one becomes available as well. And obviously, I was here a month ago, and we had a nice chat about everything relating to uh, ENCC very, very specifically, not just from the blueprint, but what the course was going to look like. And I kind of warned everyone that it might evolve. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to share a bit more about that with you guys today. Uh, and then I really enjoyed this yesterday, which was the um, snack minute <laughs> you guys did with Quinn, where he talked about specifically some of the tasks that you would find in the blueprint for ENCC. Uh, and what he was focusing on was building those VPNs from an on-prem iOS XC router to uh, Microsoft Azure. So I thought that was really cool. And I liked also that he tied it into the tutorial that he built in Cisco U. Um, and I know, Kareem, I think you've also have one out there too, um, relating to AWS, if I remember correctly. So yeah, and there's there's also going to be a Snack Minute episode covering it. So yeah, stay yeah. tuned for that. <laughs> stay tuned for that. <laughs> as, as my intro song said, I want to come back and um, talk specifically about ENCC again, but more specifically about the content that's going to be coming out October 27th. It's going to be free. It's going to be available on Cisco U uh, and what that content actually looks like. So before we get into it, just a quick reminder. So everyone knows there's these three new multi-cloud specialist exams that are available, one for the enterprise track, one for the security track, and one for the service provider track. I'm the content developer responsible for the enterprise track one, the ENCC. So that's why we're here talking about that one specifically today. And again, a month ago, you know, I went through the whole blueprint again, kind of discussing what what it, not only what it looked like, but what our training is going to look like in terms of mapping to that blueprint specifically. And and folks, again, just a reminder: this exam is live now, right? It went live September twentieth. And so folks can, can, you guys can go and sit the exam. And by the way, I have been speaking to some, some colleagues uh, in the industry who have taken the exam, who have passed the exam already. So um, nice. it's already gaining quite a bit of traction with, uh, with our folks out there. I'm scheduled to take it for, uh, in, in Cisco Live uh, Melbourne. So uh, fingers crossed to see. I, I doubt I'll pass, but we'll see. <laughs> That's um, so. So you're gonna you're gonna skip hanging out at, on the Yara <laughs> to take I an will. exam <laughs> for, for what is it? The exam is what 120 minutes or 90 minutes, uh, Patrick? It'll be two hours. Yeah, it'll be two hours. Something like 55, 60 questions. Um, you know, all multiple choice stuff. Obviously, I think you know. It, definitely, I'm gonna have a go as well while we're in. Um, yeah, me too. Life. 
Well, I hope you both pass. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, so, so we got those three specialist exams. Obviously, we, we're creating three learning paths for them. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm working specifically on that first one, the one for ENCC. Some of my colleagues are working on the SCATs and the SPCNI one. And when we get more information about those ones, I'll, I'll come back hopefully with them and we can have a, a chat about it and see what it looks like. And then again, uh, about a month ago when I was on, you know, I showed you this, which was to give you a sense of what the entire learning path looks like. Um, and if you if you open that video and you compare it to this video, already you'll see a few changes, especially in, in track four. We added some extra content relating to, uh, to SD-WAN specifically. Uh, and as you can see at the top, we're, we're targeting a kind of a mid-December release for the entire thing. So um, all tracks, all labs by uh, mid-December going live on Cisco U and with our learning partners as well. So drum roll, um, I want to look at track one a bit more specifically now and, and the courses that are that are in that track, um, just to kind of get people kind of excited because, as I said, it, it's going to be available um, from October 27th on Cisco U. Now, I, I, I know I said I wouldn't spend too much time on the blueprint, but I just wanted to kind of remind you guys that when we work on a course, when we develop a course, we're obviously making sure that we're 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 hitting the high the high points and, and and matching as closely as possible to what the the blueprint is saying, and so track one focuses primarily on this first domain in the um, in the blueprint. So as I continue to go through go through the video, if you want to pause it and go to the Cisco website and pull the blueprint and open it up, so you can have it next to you as we go through it. But that this is basically the chunk within the blueprint itself that track one really focuses on this this fifteen percent, if you like. So you can quite see quickly what we're looking at here. Internet-based connectivity to the providers, private connectivity to those providers again, and then a, a big discussion about SaaS. So kind of keep that in mind as we, as we go through track one here. So here we go, track one, we've got four courses. And so the courses are kind of going horizontally from left to right. So course one, got four topics, course two, four more topics. Sorry. So that's the way it's kind of broken down. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly kind of go uh, deeper into each course to give you an idea of, of what's actually being hit. But you can see by, by the titles there, right, we're going to start with at least setting some, some fundamentals, right? What, what is cloud computing? What are the different models that are available out there for that? The different kind of services that you can, you can purchase within those clouds um, and, and what those providers um, are out there. Course two is going to focus on that internet-based connectivity course three, that private connectivity, and then course four, the SaaS. So again, let's have a quick look here. So the first one, like I said, is, is just gonna focus on at least making sure we're all talking about the same language, that we all understand what we're talking about when we talk about cloud computing and cloud service providers. Um, and as I said, we'll have a look at differences between what a public cloud is, a private cloud, government cloud, um, hybrid cloud, and then what we also call multi-cloud now, which is when you know customers will connect to you know, Azure and, and AWS and GCP. And then another area there focusing on the different types of AAS, right? So it's like anything AAS, so platform as a service, infrastructure, network, um, uh, you know, software, all of these different types of services that can be consumed within um, that, that kind of public in infrastructure. So course two, is really talking about the internet as, as a transport for accessing those public um, cloud providers. Now, obviously the issue with using the internet is, I mean, it doesn't cost a lot of money, but you know, there's no SLA and it's not safe, right? It's not a secure connection. So we quickly have to shift gears and have a look at how we can secure that connectivity. And obviously that means leveraging stuff like a VPN primarily. And so although this is not a, a full on security course and you know, we're not gonna spend days and days talking about how VPNs work, we felt it was kind of important to at least do an overview of the fundamentals and the building blocks of, of how VPNs work. Um, Ike v1, Ike v2, IPsec, uh, transform set, like all, all of the stuff relating to, to IPsec VPNs basically, and then creating those tunnels. And I think, I think that's what you did in your, in your tutorial, right, Kareem? That was, that was actually Quinn's tutorial, correct, where we've, yeah. we've established a VPN, an example of VPN to Azure, the tutorial I've covered is more on the cloud networking side and, and how does does that work. Um, so okay. when okay. you tie them together, you have an end-to-end -end connectivity. Um, gotcha. But one thing that I wanted to, to actually, as you are talking about this, Patrick, and you're highlighting all of this, 
you know, this is this is a concentration exam at a professional level. And so for the snackers that are interested in taking the certification, but they feel like there isn't, they don't know enough about it to, or ready to, to be able to jump into a professional level, in Cisco U itself, we have course, we have learning path around hybrid cloud fundamentals. We have um, learning path that would cover what is a VPN overlay and a VPN in general, um, how to configure that on a switch. So all of these are building blocks that you could start at a, fu- a foundational level um, if your journey is to end in this concentration level. So you're not, you, you don't have to walk alone here, right? Like we, we have a lot of content in Cisco U that would help you with all of this. Agreed, 100%. And that's a really good point because it is at that CTNP enterprise level and, and we're kind of expecting someone to come in with at least some of that fundamental knowledge of routing and switching and all that. And, and specifically in this case, some, some IPsec as well. So like we've included a little bit of a review here, but you might want to go beyond that for sure and, and leverage what, what's in Cisco U. You also wrote the SDWAN fundamental um, learning path yeah. that we have in Cisco U, which is, uh, I, in myself, like, it's a really good stepping stone into into this because it gives you that foundational level from an SD one, which is a huge player in this entire um, uh, certification exam. So, it is, it is, yeah, and it's the equivalent of two days if you were doing it as an ILT. So it's not a massive, you know, chunk of of content. You can go through it pretty quickly. Um, really, you know, engaging hands on labs. We've we've recently refreshed the whole course with up to date SD one content. So. Um, definitely feel free to have a look at that to, to, to kind of ramp up your skills there. Just to wrap up course two, as you can see, there's some stuff on SD-WAN. Obviously, um, we're going to use that a lot to, to build our connectivity to the cloud providers uh, and specifically uh, trying to explain also what the cloud on-ramp for multi-cloud workflow looks like and why you would use it and how it kind of simplifies the process within vManage to build that connection to AWS or Microsoft Azure or GCP. So that's what course two is all about. Course three, you know, it's looking at a couple of things specifically. So it's all about private connectivity. So when you're thinking, well, what kind of private connectivity could I actually use to connect to AWS or GCP or Microsoft Azure? Well, there's actually a a few options here. There's something called Direct Connect and different versions of something called Direct Connect for these different providers. So you can have that more reliable, secure, um, more efficient or effective connection to, to them. Um, so some sort of like a private peering, but also it kind of leads into a conversation of, a, of other options that are available out there. Some of you are familiar with co-location, for example, which would be one way to kind of secure and speed up your connections to those providers. And now more recently, stuff like SDCI, which is Software Defined Cloud Interconnect, which is all about leveraging companies like Megaport and Equinix to be able to kind of use their fabric, if you like, or their backbone to interconnect you to those cloud providers. So more securely and, and more quickly than a, an internet connection. And then the last one is course four. Course four is all about SaaS. So what is SaaS? Where is it? And how could I consume it? And, and obviously there's different ways of connecting to these SaaS providers, if you like. So one way would be in that traditional approach where you would have all of your branches and data centers and and the branches would connect through the data center for access to the internet. So that was like the old model. Um, We call that the centralized internet gateway approach. And that's still used quite a bit. um, So we need to talk about that. But then the problem with that is that if, if, if I'm at a branch, let's say where I am now in Ottawa, Canada, and I need to talk to a SaaS service and it's in the U S um, do I want to maybe hairpin my traffic through my data center, which is in Toronto, before going to the U.S., or would I like to break out directly to the to the internet and and hit that provider more quickly? So DIA or direct internet access is is one way that you can you know kind of optimize that performance and that connectivity to the um, to the provider to the SaaS provider. Obviously, when you talk about SaaS, it kind of leads to a conversation about security. So we can talk about SASE a little bit and Umbrella as well at the same time. So kind of leveraging those services to secure your, your access to the SaaS applications. And then, I mean, I'll just go back very briefly for a second to the, the blueprint. You can kind of see 1.3.d at the bottom there, dedicated connectivity to uh, a SaaS provider. So what we did is we created a bit of content where we, we look at some examples of SaaS providers that offer direct connectivity to, to, again, to just kind of maximize or optimize that connection. So the examples here we, we, we built into the content focuses on WebEx and uh, the, the partnership with Equinix uh, at the same time. 
There you go, guys. So super quick, you know, uh, just a little bit of a teaser in terms of what that content's going to look like uh, when it releases at the end of the month. I'm excited about the fact that we're making the first track for now uh, by October 27th free for everybody with a Cisco U account. So that's going to be huge. Um, if this is, you know, a certification that you're after, might as well go check it out, uh, get on Cisco U and, and um, by October 27th, it will be will be available at least track one for you. When, when we had a chat last time, you guys talked about being excited about the labs. And I, I was like, I can't go yes. back on a snack minute and not talk about the labs, obviously. So so I, if we have time for just another like a minute or two, um, I, I shared the topology with you guys last month when we had a chat. And what I want to do is just show you what the lab's gonna look like in Cisco U when it goes live. So if, if you'll allow me, just a very, very quick demo. So we're in Cisco U. Um, this is the interface that's actually gonna look like this. When you log into Cisco U and you go into the ENCC learning path and you're like, okay, what do I feel like doing today? I feel like learning a little bit more about how SD-WAN can kind of connect to AWS and, and how to establish the, the, you know, that connectivity and leverage the, the multi-cloud you know, workflow in vManage. So you would go into that course and, and on the right there, you would see all the different topics and you can kind of see there's one that's got that little beaker and obviously that means it's a lab. So this is exactly what the lab is gonna look like. Um, and then you could scroll through and, and see the different steps and kind of guides you through, you know, what the lab is looking at here. What I really wanted to show you and hopefully blow people's minds away is how quickly they can get into the lab. So there's this cute little initialize lab button here. Um, I'm going to click it. And as we chat through and, and kind of discuss what the lab, oh, look at this, the lab is ready. So um, I, I didn't do anything. This, this, is, this is for real. Um, I, I, it's just not behind the scenes. This is, we didn't pause the video. You get here, I, I kept talking. So the lab is ready. So what does that mean the lab is ready? Well, I can click on this. Now what's just happened? The, the lab content has just shifted a little bit to the left. It's given me a menu on the right where I've got access to different devices, the topology, you know, the scenario. And I've got that blue toggle open device button here. And what's gonna happen is because I've got the jump post selected on the right, when I'm gonna click this, it's gonna open a new tab and do a web RDP to your jump post in our lab wow. environment. Uh, and we're ready Very to cool. go. And so the first, you know, the first step in this lab would be to launch Chrome. Um, and I'm just kind of, I know what the lab is asking us to do. So it's gonna get us to go into Chrome um, and connect to vManage. Now, obviously this is a sandbox. So it's all, you know, it's gonna, hey, what's going on here? Is this, is this a secure kind of thing? And you're gonna say, yes, yes, it is secure. It's just a lab, everything's fine. Uh, and then we're gonna go right into vManage. Um, and listen, uh, as much as that's exciting, I, I just wanna show you the dashboard here that we had to create to make this work. So, so all of the all of these cloud labs that, that we were offering you require quite a bit of automation for the accounts and, and to spin up you know, workloads and different services in the cloud. And so what we did is we built this little uh, portal within the lab environment, allowing you to quickly access the different types of automation and services that you might need. So it might need Umbrella or Thousand Eyes or Vanalytics or even an Office 365 account. But this one right here, this is like the best widget ever. This is the AWS widget that we have here. And basically what happens is when you're doing this lab in Cisco U, you need to have VPCs spun up for you in AWS and you need an account because you need that account information to then tell vManage where to connect to. So, yep. you know, you just click request account and listen, I'm not gonna let, let you know, we're not gonna wait here, but it takes about three to four minutes because it's actually creating the VPCs in AWS for you right now. And when it's done, it's gonna give us the account ID, the key ID and the secret information. And we would, we would take that information, we would go to vManage, you know, we would log into vManage. Uh, and then we would launch the multi-cloud, um, you know, on-ramp for multi-cloud workflow uh, to be able to get this, this process going. So I would go over here, right? I want a multi-cloud and then I'd come down here and, and, you know, associate my cloud account and I'll select AWS, right? And you can kind of see right away that, you know, I'm going to be needing a key to log in, right? So there we go. See that API key and that secret key? Well, this is the information that's that's being retrieved right now from our pool of accounts. You can see it's it's still working. It takes, like I said, three, four minutes. And then you grab that information, you drop it into the, the vManage and off you go. Having these labs handy as part of the 
the training is is huge. Um, I, I, it, it makes a lot of sense as as far as um, handing off the credentials for an AWS or Azure or whatever it is that that we provide. Um, part of this lab, you know, it saves, I know it saves me from having to go create a, a free tier account and having to build all of that myself. Exactly. So, um, I'm excited about this. This is, this is awesome. Unfortunately, Patrick, that's all the, all the time we have for today. So, um, maybe we could have you come back later and really dig into one of these labs and, and see what people can learn from them. So, uh, thanks for coming back, giving us the updates for, for the NCC course materials and, um, snackers go check it out. It's ready to go for you. And uh, good luck on your NCC exams and, and all the coursework you're doing. So thanks and see you next week. Thank you, snipers. Cheers. Thanks.